today we are going to make some grass. No, I'm not in Colorado, so it's not going to be that kind of grass. It's our techniques that are so simple and sensible, your models have practically built them themselves. <laughs> Hello folks, it's Mad Dog Merv and welcome to today's show. Today we're in the home office and I'm doing some editing because today's show, we're not going to have a lot of video. It's going to be, well, more or less a slideshow of some of the Panthers that I have built in the past. So I am big into what they call the Paper Panthers, or Paper Panthers, Paper Panzer Panthers. Ooh, these are Panzers tanks, uh, Germany, World War II, that uh, were on paper and ideas that they had, that some of them made it as far as maybe a mock-up, and some of them maybe just never got out of the paper stage. But I like building them because I don't have to be exact. I don't have to be precise because, well, they're they're fictional, <laughs> for, for lack of a better term. They're fictional. They didn't actually exist other than on paper. And it gives me a chance to try out different camouflages and some of the, just some, some fun stuff. So I really enjoy putting these together. Today, we are going to cover three of the anti-aircraft uh, Panthers that, um, uh, that, I, that I've built. We're also going to cover one that's kind of special. It's a, a very late war. I call it my, um, well, we, we'll talk about it when I get to it and you'll, you'll see. Hopefully you like this piece. I've got a bunch of Panthers and other, quote, paper Panzers. Um, even American, what they call American paper Panzers. Um, you know, World War II, uh, if it had gone into 1946 kind of thing. So, anyway, stick with Mad Dog Merv. And let's check out some of my paper Panzers that are Panthers. So somewhere in my travels, I picked up this resin turret. I was probably in a trade for some other stuff because I don't remember actually buying it. But it was by Accurate Armor, and it's the Rhine Metal version, uh, proposed version of the 55 millimeter twin turret, which has instead of the rounded uh, rear, it has the the flat sided um, rear portions. And we'll look at that in just a minute. First off, I had a uh, kit from Tamiya of some wildlife, and in it was this raven. I thought, that will be perfect to stick on the barrel of one of these anti-aircraft guns. And i got to tell you, I think it turned out really good putting it on this particular one. So I got a chassis that I had, which was uh, just a Panther G uh, late model. I went ahead and put some side skirts on it and decided to try out this particular camouflage. So most of my late war stuff is sprayed with a, um, a dark brown or a primer brown, primer red color as a base and then the, the Dunkel Gelb and the Dunkel Grun uh, over that. And I decided to try these stripes out. I like how this turned out. Um, you can see the rear quarter here so the rear is in three welded slab you know flat pieces and this was that Rhine metal uh, proposed design this one I decided to put a command antenna on because you know they probably needed some really good communication with a some kind of a director directing where the fire should be so there you go and then I got this uh, Tamiya figure Not, I think it was a Tamiya figure painted him up in uh, the tanker colors and just had him hanging out there and I thought this one turned out pretty good I was really happy with this particular one. I can't remember what the writing on the side I can't even remember which kit I got it from let alone what it exactly says but I thought it was very appropriate to throw it on up there along with that you know the hook and cross yeah I, I like how this one went So this is one of those kits I picked up for like 15 or 20 bucks at uh, one of the local IPMS sales. It really looks cool, doesn't it, in, in this box art? 
uh, thought, yeah, we're, we're going to try this out. I'm going to build it and uh, see what I, I want to do. I like the ambush camouflage scheme. So we're going to try an ambush out on it, and here we go. Now this got some added on things that we'll talk about in a few minutes, like the smoke discharger right up front there. Yeah, that didn't come in the kit. I got that off of a off of a tiger, and I put the uh, the figures. These are to me a figures that I painted up, and well, the machine gun there, the anti aircraft machine gun. I put this um, guard on it, if you will. And on this side, I put one of these anti-tank rifles. So this is one of those rifles that early on in the war um, packed a real punch and could knock out like trucks and you know light armor, things like that. Thought it was appropriate to put that on there. So I got these uh, two tankers here having a little chat. Again, we have done the, um, uh, the ambush camouflage, a little variation on the ambush camouflage. Uh, again, I wanted to try that out, and I like how it how it went. But you'll notice on the turret there's some uh, additional things. So these uh, bins, I got them off of an early model, uh, Tiger One, and thought they would be perfect for putting in one of them. I got a tarp, but thought they'd be per perfect for uh, putting some stowage. You'll also know, notice as you look around the turret um, the streaks, the rust streaks that I was able to add the um, dry brushing technique that I used to get those edges to just pop and the uh, the washes that I used to get down into the cracks and crevices and give us that um, you know that contrast so I really like how this one turned out and I put this one on a steel wheeled panther chassis yeah was happy with this one for sure So here I got a dragon steel wheeled panther, went ahead and put the side skirts on, and I wanted something very unique for a project I was doing, and I was thinking like the Battle of Zalo Heights, very end of the war, you know, the outskirts of Berlin. I wanted something with night fighting capability, so I put the night fighting gear on this, and then I built a fighting compartment over the engine deck. Now I know that's not realistic because it would be so flipping hot back there you wouldn't be able to <laughs> wouldn't be able to operate, but you know hey, it's it's a fantasy anyway, right? So here is my infrared gear that I put for the driver, for the gunner, and for the commander. And again, I decided to do this kind of a striped um, camouflage on here because I liked how it turned out on that on that first tank. Now. This particular one, as I said earlier, is part of a series. So I wanted a Yog Tiger with a fighting compartment on it to be kind of the sniper, if you will. And I put some modifications on that, and we'll look at that another time. And then I wanted a vehicle uh, with that big Uhu um, light on it, which was the um, uh, infrared light that kind of lit up the battlefield in infrared. And then I wanted the Panther, which was kind of the get around on the uh, flanks type of uh, vehicle. But I really wanted the fighting compartment. So as they got into the thick of things, they had these machine guns and, and Panzerfaust and other equipment that they could use in this compartment to fight in close quarters with with others so you see here I've put a couple of MG 34 mounts uh, a couple of Panzerfausts and first aid kits some ammo things like that again it would just be too hot back there with right over the engine they wouldn't be able to operate but again you know it, it's fantasy and and it was fun to do back here I put a communications box that the troops uh, supporting this tank could uh, hook to and communicate with and also those using infrared uh, rifles could hook to that as well so again kind of a fantasy deal but a lot of fun so here we have this 20 millimeter quad mount and they do make it in resin you could also, I think it's Amusing Hobby is coming out with one, I can't remember, but this was way before all of that. I decided to take these um, mat uh, mantlets from 
that observation panther that has kind of the wooden gun on it. So I had a couple of those. I took those. I cut up this particular turret, and you can see where I've added the styrene to get the results that I wanted for the twin twin 20 millimeter mounts. And you can see how I decided to go ahead and put those in there. Now I decided to simulate like a uh, like a zipper bag type of thing uh, versus just plucking the plucking the gums, guns in a big empty space. Uh, you can see one of the barrels has actually had one of the tips fall off. But I went ahead and put this on a steel wheeled panther that I had, an extra one, and tried to match the camouflage to a point. But you know, honestly, these types of things they would have just put on an old chassis anyway. So. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, we'll have a part two with some other ones coming up pretty soon. Thanks for joining us today.